In this video, we're talking about misplaced modifiers. A modifier is a word, a phrase, or a clause that describes something else. And you want that modifier to be as close to the thing that it's describing as possible. A misplaced modifier, if it's not sitting as close to the word that it's modifying as possible, it can confuse a reader because the modifier looks like it's describing the wrong element in a sentence. So before we talk about misplaced modifiers, let's just talk about modifiers for a second. The pretty girl walked over to the counter. Pretty is a word that is modifying or describing girl. It's letting us know what kind of girl, a pretty girl. The very pretty girl walked over to the counter. All right, we still have pretty, and it's telling us more about the girl. But we also have this word very, which modifies the word pretty. So it's not just pretty girl, but very pretty girl. Very doesn't talk about the girl. It's not a very girl. But very is talking about pretty, and to what extent pretty actually is. And the next, the last sentence. The very pretty girl walked quickly over to the counter. We have pretty, that's describing girl. We have very, that's describing pretty. And we have this word quickly, which is describing walked. It's telling us how fast or at what speed is this walking taking place. So as you can see by just looking at, at some of the drawings that I've, I've made with these arrows, you can see that the the modifiers are sitting very, very closely to the words that they're describing. Pretty is right next to girl, so is fairy is right next to pretty, and quickly is right next to walk. When they're sitting so closely to the words that they're modifying, these modifiers aren't confusing. For example, we wouldn't think that pretty is actually referring to counter. That wouldn't make sense. We're not talking about a pretty counter. We're talking about a pretty girl. And we see that because it's sitting right next to it. So let's talk about misplaced modifiers. Let's read this sentence together, and it has a misplaced modifier in it. She served cookies to her guests on, a, on paper plates. So were the guests the ones that were sitting on paper plates? She served cookies to her guests, and her guests were on paper plates. Well, that doesn't really make sense. It should be the cookies that are on paper plates. So if we just take this modifier and we move it, she served cookies on paper plates to her guests. It eliminates any kind of confusion. Here's another example. He nearly played Tomb Raider for 12 hours last Saturday. He nearly played Tomb Raider. So he almost played Tomb Raider, or he kind of, sort of played Tomb Raider, or he... Play Tomb Raider, but not really? No, that's not what the sentence is saying. It's telling us that he played Tomb Raider for almost, or for nearly, 12 hours last Saturday. Here's the last example. Read the sentence yourself, pause the video, and see if you can find the misplaced modifier in the sentence and how you would adjust the sentence so that it's not confusing. I'll be here when you're done. All right, so what you think? <clears throat> Jamie ate a sandwich sitting on the park bench. So did Jamie eat a sandwich that he just found sitting there on a park bench? I guess he could have done that, but it'd be kind of gross. It's more likely that Jamie was the one that was sitting on the park bench while he ate a sandwich. So we could say Jamie, comma, sitting on the park bench and then put a comma after that. Jamie, sitting on the park bench, ate a sandwich. Or we could reword the sentence and actually add a word and say, while sitting on the park bench, you a comma there, while sitting on the park bench, Jamie ate a sandwich. So just by moving around some of these words, it makes it a little bit clearer to your reader what exactly you're talking about and describing.